three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff of the Falcon 9. The important thing is not information. The important thing is people. 绝大多数产品销量可能一年下来几千个，其实商业跟技术还没有走到一致去。People are thinking through where is the advantage of the wearable. They're just jumping in it too much. Hey, let me see those for a second. Now you don't just look at the stars. 人工智能、虚拟现实、可穿戴技术预示的究竟是怎样的未来？在这种 VR、AR 的前沿里面，它是有机会去取代手机的。They're actually good for games, but it's not ready for sort of daily life, which is where the value is. 历史演进，规律与偶然并存，下一次颠覆式革新还有多远？ Smartphones are a very early stage、yeah. of wearables.、Mm. We built a type of wearable display. When you met somebody, it would flash their name,、mm. the bottom part of the glasses. From the past, to find the future, to explore the value of the future. The wearable display provides Alex Pentland to talk to Sogo CEO Wang Xiaochuan. The future has been revealed in the experiment of testing the future. 嗯。And trying to promote interaction between people. 万事归一，人为本源。这是可穿戴设备之父 MIT 人类动力学实验室主任阿莱克斯·彭特兰教授对于未来科技的一种执念。People think about wearables as cell phone, but actually they're sensors. They measure you, and they give back data about you. 在可穿戴领域从事研究逾三十年，他的学生包含谷歌眼镜开发者萨德·斯特纳，但彭特兰教授对于目前市场中的可穿戴产品并不满意。他认为这项技术的真正价值仍在实验室里孕育着。那从你现在看，往下最让我们能够兴奋的这种是穿戴设备，会是一些什么样的设备呢 ？The wearables that we've been working on in more recent years are again about coordinating people.、Mm. I think the most important use of cell phones is to meet people. Also, fashion. You know, the clothes we wear.、Mm. It says something about us. It communicates between us. And so, what I think is. That wearables will turn out to be most important in coordinating between people, making us work together smoothly without misunderstanding or anything like that. So we build little tiny things that that look like name badges that help people understand the pattern of communication in their company,、mm. so that you can avoid having. What are called silos, little parts of the company that don't talk to anybody else, and、mm. so that you can get the correct flow of information in in the company.、And、we've also worked on things we call memory glasses.、Mm. It's nice to be able to have a good memory. 
Today, often we look things up. You have to know to look for them. Uh, but we figured out that you can do a lot of this unconsciously. So for instance, uh, we built a type of wearable display that it would, when you met somebody, right, it would flash their name in mm. the bottom part of the, the glasses. And it does it so fast that you don't even know that it flashed it, mm. right? You're not aware of it. But suddenly you begin to remember the name because mm. your brain processes it while, while you're not really conscious of it. So suddenly it's as if you have a really good memory for things. Mm. So I think there are many things like that that you can begin doing with wearables. So, so an example of something I wish someone would build, and we've built simple versions, but I want a, I want a commercial version. Maybe, oh, you'll, yeah. maybe you will do it, right? Is I want to walk into a conference, mm. you know, a thousand people, and I know somewhere out there there are three people I have to talk to, mm. but I don't know which ones and I don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. So why can't we have a search algorithm you know, highlight in my glasses who it is I should mm. talk to. You know, I walk in and I see an arrow over mm. your head. That means I should talk to you. Mm. Something like that. Okay. I think that smartphones are a very early stage yeah. of wearables. Mm. It's just like, you know, clocks used to be on the wall mm. and then they got to be pocket watches, but that was inconvenient. And then when they got to be on your wrist, mm. that was really interesting because now you were aware of time all the time. Mm. Right? It's not just when you pulled it out. So smartphones are, are like pocket watches. Mm. And the next thing is, is to make them something where you're just aware of information all the time. Mm. The trouble is, is the, the wrist is not very big. Mm. So you can't put all that information there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we don't know how it's going to go out in terms of the interface. Is it going to be in glasses? You know, we've built versions of glasses that display things. They look like normal mm. glasses, but, but they, they display information. You and I are wearing earpieces now, so mm. maybe something like that. And, of course, you know, we have our hands and arms and clothes mm. to be able to display things. 当智能手机成为移动设备中海量信息的唯一出口，人们纷纷开始猜测颠覆手机的是否就是可穿戴设备。作为科技公司的领军人物，王小川一向嗅觉灵敏，也早已开始行动，意欲提前判断出可穿
you know, the idea of a virtual world is good for entertainment, for mm. some fun, but uh, we actually get most of our value from each other. You know, it's like the worst punishment in the world is solitary confinement, mm. right? So it's really um, the interactions we have with other people that not only is most pleasing to us, but that's where the value comes in society. 虽然彭特兰教授尚不认可目前市场中的可穿戴设备，但在中国，一个行业已经兴起。来自全球最顶尖的科学家们向观众展示了飞行探索、人工智能、虚拟技术新产将个人指纹信息转换成光束的光子卡，不仅可以用机器人，只要通过手机蓝牙相连。名为 Talk Band 的手环，除了计步测距卡。仅二零一五年上半年，中国可穿戴设备的出货量就达到四千二百五十万台。据不完全统计，全年市场规模将达到一百一十亿元以上。那在硬件繁荣背后，我开始感觉到我们有一些形式化主义的互联网的认知。惊人的数字不禁令人怀疑，这是逐利的盲从，还是理性的决策？在这个穿戴设备里面。像中美有什么样的区别？你会认为中国这方面我们穿戴式设备这样的一个市场会有什么样的这个走偏了的地方 ？The thing that I've seen is that there's much excitement about wearables in China, and a lot of that is because China has so much capacity and skill in building wearables. But most people are approaching it too fast.、Mm -hmm. Too fast means that they take an existing model. Uh, and they're just copying it in a different、mm. format, right?、Mm. So they think about what happens on the computer screen or happens on the cell phone, and they say, "Oh, we'll just put that in a watch." But this is different than those other ones. One is it's too small to see many、mm -hmm. things, but the other thing that's an advantage of the watch is as I go through the day, I look at it. Just out of the corner of my eye all the time,、mm. so I can be aware of things、mm. without it taking my attention. In fact, that's why this was invented. This was invented by、uh, airplane pilots、mm. who wanted to keep track of the time so they didn't run out of gas. But since they were flying, they couldn't afford to pull out a pocket watch.、Mm. So they wanted to just be aware of it without focusing on it. And so people are thinking through. Where is the advantage of the wearable? They're just jumping at it too much. 那中国市场有看过这个其他企业做的穿戴式设备，有看到过一些吗 ？Well, I've seen many different wearables, but I don't have a good sense of what the market is like. You probably know better. 我觉得穿戴式设备其实在中国这个也是非常热的一个概念，但事实上在我们看到现在能够真正生产出来的这种产品就已经少很多了。嗯，那。生产出来产品真的面试之后，马上就面临一个用户是否喜欢，能够有销量的这一块那事实上，这个绝大多数产品这种销量可能一年下来也就在这个几千个，最多几万个，甚至只有几百个的销量。嗯，所以真正这个现在在市面上能够卖的比较好的就是这种手环，包括我们的这样一个一个儿童手表，我们一年至少今年已经卖了几十万部出去了。那手环现在这个卖的最多是小米，但因为他们那个有一个特点，就特别便宜。所以手环在这个时代里面的话呢，有一些用，但是如果假设真的价格高了，估计大家就不买了。I mean that's the problem with many of these things is that they're they're sort of interesting, they're sort of fun, but they're not something you have to have. It's not something that that really adds great value to your life, and that's the barrier that they have to have. 在运动健康里面，大家做手环通常都会做一个跟你的朋友去。分享你的跑步的步数，做一个这样一个排名。Sharing in groups, that's good, but you have to ask, how important are number of steps? It's an interesting thing, but it's only a little thing. 它其实是心中带着一种一种爱，它其实不是只在做一个硬件，其实反复强调的还是对人的这样一种思考。所以这样做穿戴设备的时候，其实咱们了解到。国内有很多厂商，这个特别小的创业公司，在生产设备的时候，更多的落到了一个产品或者用户的一个 benefit， 并没有回到一个本源的我们为什么要这样的一个设备。因此，在这方面，我觉得感想是非常强烈的。I think there are many other things that could be calculated that are much more interesting.、Mm -hmm. How far do people in your neighborhood commute? Which way do they go?、Mm -hmm. So that you can learn a better way to go to work among people like you. What is the work-life balance?、Mm. Do other people work as much as you? Do they、mm. work more? You know, an interesting thing to think about is is that there are some things like the health thing. 
uh, mm. where there needs to be some more basic research done. We talked about traditional medicine mm. and having a better way to mm. measure health mm. than we do today. So someone needs to do that research before there'll be a good product. Mm. Maybe it's not just one company. Maybe there needs to be a, a group of companies that come together to do the basic research and then, mm. and then commercialize it in their own way. And same thing with education. Wouldn't it be interesting to have a bunch of companies come together to do the basic research about how to make better education and then share the costs and then commercialize it in their own way? 所以我很好奇一个问题，说这种工作是应该一堆公司来做，还是是由一些高校、由这种学术方式来驱动这样的事情 ？So my institute,、mm. right at MIT, the Media Lab, is funded mostly by companies.、Mm. So companies、yeah. give money,、mm. share the cost. Everyone puts in one employee worth、mm. of money, but then there are some 400 projects.、Mm. So everybody has a limited investment for potentially a lot of、mm. outcome. So you can imagine having something that is, you know, with a university, with some other sort of institute, where companies put in a little bit of money, but、mm. for、uh, a range of of research or development that would benefit all of them, and that might be much more efficient than doing it internally. So, you should have spent two years in the research lab, and still be more careful to understand the sponsor's this kind of power and rights. So, this is a big contribution. 给我们挺大的一个启发，就是中国现在这种高校这样一个循环还做得不够的好。That's right. We appreciate it when people come to MIT and sponsor MIT, but it's also interesting to think about: could you set up an institute here in in China that would be like a sister laboratory of MIT to be able to do some of these more things that really should be done in China, like traditional Chinese medicine, things like that, where you have the expertise. 万众创新，这个在二零一五年高度出现的词汇，要怎样不沦落为一句空洞的口号？也许除了大力的宣传之外，我们依旧要回到本源，去孕育创新的土壤，去理解每一项科技真正的价值，才有可能让这两个字最终得以实现。公司其实这个有很多产品线之外，这个去年开始也进入到了开始做穿戴式的设备。你刚才提到就是说，你觉得这个 smartphone 是一个这个 early stage 的这样的一个产品。那我们在思考的时候，我们其实也很怕做的太超前，所以我们选择的一个产品是儿童的智能手表。孩子们其实是没有联网的，因为给他们做手机，可能他们并不能正确的去使用它，屏幕会伤眼睛，然后这个在幼儿园上课的时候也会影响注意力。甚至看到一些不该看到的这样一些内容，所以现在在中国其实大多数小孩是没有手机的，在美国这个情况是更加的、更加极端一些。And I think that's a great insight that is that there really isn't anything for kids,、mm -hmm. and that it doesn't have to be a smartphone; it could be something like a smartwatch.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. 而且它的需求也不太一样，因为小孩子需要父母知道他在什么地方，到幼儿园接他的时候别给走丢了。以及小孩子也特别需要父母的这样一个陪伴，尤其在中国，这个很多时候父母双方都在上班，甚至还有的在这个异地的城市。因此，在这种情况里面，怎么让孩子跟父母能够经常被陪伴，走得更近，这件事情，呃，这个美国这方面是有需求，中国需求可能更大。优酷，世界都在看。